I can confirm that we're recording. So that is a new requirement now that all the uh, committee meetings have to be recorded and posted. Okay, so it is four o'clock. So I'd like to call the uh, meeting to order and uh, declare that we do have quorum, uh, noting that quorum is, um, yeah, so I'd like to move right into the approval of the agenda. Uh, that the agenda for August 4th, 2021 regular meeting of the Pelham Finance and Audit Committee be adopted. Could I have a mover for that, please? Uh, Councillor Core, thank you. Seconder, Councillor Olson, thank you. Um, any discussion with respect to the agenda? Any additions or deletions? Hearing none, uh, could uh, I have a vote of hands to uh, to approve the agenda then? Approved. <laughs> okay, and so carried. Um, does anyone have a declaration of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof to declare? Seeing none, uh, we'll move to the approval of minutes that the committee approved the minutes from June uh, 9th, 2021 of the Pelham Finance and Audit Committee meeting. Could I have a mover on that, please? Michael, uh, seconder, Ron. I can second. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> we'll get you in there sometime, Bill. Mm. Um, so, um, any additions or deletions to the uh, minutes that were presented? Seeing none that the minutes of June 9th, 2021 of Pell Finance and Audit Committee be approved. All in favor? So carried, thank you. Um, so uh, we need, Now a motion to uh, that the next portion of the meeting be closed to the public in order to consider the following. 2239-2J, a trade secret or, or scientific, te technical, commercial, or financial information that belongs to the municipality or local board and has monetary value or potential monetary value. And 2392K, a position, plan, procedure, criteria or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on or uh, to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality or local board. Um, could I have a motion then to move to in camera or Ron, seconder please. Michael, thank second. you. Oh, oh. <laughs> Bill, why don't you second it? Thank you. <laughs> and uh, all in favor? So we now move to in camera. So I assume that we stop the recording at this point. Three, Go Mr. Ahead. Chair, I'll pause the video recording of this meeting and I'll move Ms. Quinlan and Ms. Tunakaitis into the waiting room. Okay, I confirm that the recording is resumed. Okay, thank you, Jacqueline. Um, so, um, Teresa, do you want to talk to this um, for the uh, Michael and Bill? Um, these reports had been presented to um, council on Monday, July 26th at, at that particular meeting. So, um, Teresa, I'm not sure if you want to yeah. go through them in detail. Yeah, or... I don't know if they have any questions. I think the, the big thing that probably jumps out here for us is that uh, if you look at the revenue schedule under the finance department, the safe restart COVID-19 funding. So we had a budget of 602350 and at the end of May, we're at 545125 So that number, the reason why it's so high at this point in time is because the MCC has been shut down for five months. And when we prepared the budget last year, we were not anticipating a five month shutdown with the MCC. I think we were just 
we were just anticipating a one month, the month of January. So we are using up the grant quicker than anticipated. And the good news is that, you know, the province did um, announce the other 347,000 that we don't uh, have in our budget, but um, that is a concern for us that at the end of May, you know, when 42% of our time has lapsed, we've used up 90% of our grant. So that's just a concern. Uh, the, and the other good news is that the MCC now is opened as of uh, July the 16th. And, you know, according to the Director of Recreation, the ice is booked from six in the morning to 11 at night, both pads fully booked. So we're, we're starting to make up, you know, um, for lost revenues with both ice pads being opened. And as of August the 3rd, the, um, the gyms, both gyms now are opened uh, for basketball and other activities uh, because the vaccination center now has moved upstairs to the accuracy room. So that now has enabled us to um, to rent out that space as well. So that's so I think we're going to see um, just the MCC starting to uh, recoup some of those lost revenues. So that's that's all I have. Uh, the water is always lower because don't forget that the water is billed every other month. So it just depends on the number of billings. And, uh, and most of, a lot of the water is consumed during the summertime. Mind you, this year we've had such a wet summer that I think it might be a little bit different with the water consumption as compared to last year. But overall, um, there's nothing that's really uh, jumping out here except for the Safe Free Start grant. So, yes, Michael? Just with respect to the Safe Restart Grant, so your total now is nine hundred and seventy thousand for twenty twenty one. Yes. I just I just wondered what you are forecasting. Is that gonna see us through? Um, you know, the end of July. Well, anyway, is that gonna see us through? Well, if we continue to stay open. So if we don't have an, a fourth wave, because we don't know if that's going to happen, but right now the numbers look good for us in, in, in the Niagara region in Ontario, uh, I think that uh, we'll be very close. So that, that's all I can say. It's a hard thing to predict. But um, there's only a few of the arenas that are actually open in the region right now. Uh, St. Catharines is about to start to open theirs up because they, they just shut down their vaccination center. And uh, I know Niagara Falls is opened and I think Welland's opening uh, in a few weeks. So we probably have a one month advantage over most of the uh, arenas in the region just because our ice was ready to go. So that's, that's good news. And 12 hours a day on both pads is, is, is good revenue. Yeah. Yeah. So. so the other thing that we we don't have a, a an exact number to quantify, but we've been offering to the uh, Niagara Health the the gyms for the four or five months that there's been no no fee associated to that, but right. there's a hope that they will be compensating uh, the town for the use of, of those facilities. So there's there's no set number, but there there's a pen, potential of, of some monies coming back to us for, for the use of, of the, uh, the gyms. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, during that period, even when the ice was off, uh, we saw, and you could see it in the, the charts, the increase in the hydro, because we had to have the air conditioning on at a certain level with 2,000 people a day going into that facility. Just think of all of the hydro and cleaning and all that stuff that, uh, that we incurred. So we have all those costs quantified. So when they're ready to say, you know, what were the, what was the cost of the vaccination uh, clinics? We had those numbers ready to go. And also when we did our safe free start interim report in June, we, uh, there was a section of supplemental we can put, you know, we were allowed to um, just describe other uh, challenges that we were having. And we put that as a challenge to say that, you know, there's been an increased cost because of the vaccination centers. And we also gave the numbers of, you know, the number of people that Pelham actually vaccinated, which was quite high for the, for a town of our size. I think we were the second highest in the region because they, they love the facility so much. So that's very impressive. Yeah. 
So I don't that, know if there's any questions. That's interesting. Oh. Will that will that number be publicized at all? I think that's a great news. That's a great news story that the town should. You know. Yeah, and I think I think it was well, maybe it was internally. So that that's a good point, Michael. I'll mention that to uh, to Vicky, even to say you know, like a sort of a wrap up of the vaccination centers and where we're at, because it was just it was just incredible. Um, and then with regards to the expenditures um, checklist here, uh, the expenditures report, you know, we're at 42% time lapsed and expenses in total are at 38%. Uh, so I think we're, you know, we're trying hard to keep the cost down. When the MCC was closed, there were staff that were laid off um, and some staff were um, repurposed to different departments in the public works department. So there was some salary savings there. Um, so I don't know if there's any specific questions with regards to the uh, expenditures. And then with regards to the MCC report that we have, I mean, there is, you can really see the impact of the, uh, the shutdown. So of a budget of 585,000 for revenue, we're at about 85,000 in actual to the end of May, which is 14% and we should be at 42%. So that budgeted number uh, when, when we did the budget last year was already reduced from what we thought was gonna be a COVID impact. So we're still even lower below that. And then uh, and you could see the expenses at 32% versus the period lapse of 42. So we do have some savings in the expenses. But you could see the hydro actually starting to go up in May and in, you know, in May because of the uh, the air conditioning that had that we had to turn on. Yeah. So I think that's it for those reports. Okay, so um, any further questions then from um, committee? So I'll zip through uh, um, four motions then that the uh, operating financial reports to May 31st, 2021, that the financial report that the committee received the May 31st, 2021 operating financial report. For information, could I have a mover, please? Ron, thank you. A seconder? I could second. Bill, thank you. Uh, all in favor? So carried, thank you. Um, that the committee received the May 31st, 2021 operating financial revenue report for information purposes. Uh, could I have a mover on that, please? Michael, seconder, Wayne, uh, all in favor. So carried, thank you. Um, expenditure report that the committee received the May 31st, 2021 operating expenditure revenue report for information purposes. Um, a mover, please. Wayne, seconder. Michael, thank you. All in favor? So carried, thank you. Uh, MCC operating financial report to May 31st, uh, 2021 that the committee received the May 31 2021 MCC operating financial report for information. Could I have a mover on that? Ron, thank you. Seconder. Wayne, thank you. All in favor? So carried. Okay. And that brings us to the capital report. So, yes. Okay. So, uh, this is the first, the second quarter of the, uh, the capital report. This is going to council on August the 23rd. And what we have here, uh, what we're showing from the 2021 capital projects is 50% uh, of between committed and actuals, we've got about 50% of the projects um, committed. Like with an, so the committed means that an RFP has been issued, uh, a purchase order has been issued. Uh, since this report is done, I know like right now, in the next week or so, there's about five or six other RFPs that are at, that are closing. So we're seeing a lot of activity right now, as far as um, going out for RFP on these capital projects. Now uh, we did have a um, 
a, a, a transition in staff in the engineering department, and we just hired someone new uh, to replace the person. So I think right now they're back to the full complement, and we'll see a lot more activity happening with, with getting these projects out. Well, I think that's a testament to um, the entire uh, senior staff getting, being able to have all the financial reports done well ahead of time and getting on, being able to approve the budget in a timely manner and being able to get out of the gate with respect to a lot of these RFPs. So uh, it's nice to see a lot of these uh, happening uh, fairly quickly. So it doesn't often happen that we're quick. Uh, yeah. Any any municipality is quick, but uh, we're, yeah. we're seem to and, be doing a good job. And we're seeing uh, the prices being favorable uh, because of that, Councillor Wink. So yeah. they're coming. They're coming under budget, which is very good. Okay. So, um, anyone have any questions with respect to the capital report? Yeah, John, I have a, a question here. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Yeah, so the only thing I noticed, uh, Teresa, just to your comment there around um, uh, budgets coming in favorable, favorably, sorry, I saw that the year to day budget and the approved budget were still the same uh, for all projects. So I was wondering if there was. Uh, any updates on that front uh, to kind of recognize some of the savings that you spoke to earlier? Um, th through you, uh, Mr. Chair, we don't normally adjust the original budgets to uh, reflect the savings because, um, because if we are under budget uh, then, and we want to repurpose those funds, we would have to go back to council and ask for approval to move the funds around for another project. So um, right now, if it is favorable, we just let it fall out. So we don't, um, we don't adjust that bill. Is that something you would want to see? Yeah, I think it would just highlight the comment that you made earlier. And I think that's also a good message too, that things are coming in better than anticipated. Uh, so that, that's a good news story. And I would yeah. have thought the repurposing of funds to other projects would have warranted approval anyway. So I, uh, mm -hmm. but I, obviously I could be wrong on that. So. No, no, that, that's exactly what we have to do. So sometimes that happens. Sometimes if we're over on a budget and we know that uh, it's mostly in the public works department, and, uh, and the director knows that he has um, some slippage, you know, some extra funds, he will do a report to council and ask for permission to move those dollars over. And it's usually, you know, if it's a roads project, it's a roads project. So it has to sort of be in the same category. So for example, we can't move, let's say we have savings in the water, wastewater, we can't move those savings over to the roads because of the reserves. So that we can't do. But if it's roads to roads and we get permission from council because we want to do something extra or maybe something went over, then we do do that. Um, but we can, we can highlight that though. Uh, normally where council does see that bill is that um, every quarter we do the committee of um, committee of the whole report where we publish all of the RFPs and we show what the actual came in and what the, uh, the budget was. So that's where council does, does um, where, where they do see the savings, but that's a good point. We, we, can, we can put it on this report as well, just to highlight that. Thank you. Yeah, and, and some of, uh, sorry, Michael, I'll, I'll get to you in a second. Some, some of the uh, numbers are, are quite astounding. Just for example, um, the um, next phase of uh, Pelham Street construction yeah. came in uh, $300,000 under budget. Yeah. So um, that was a big savings for us. And, uh, you know, we, we got, uh, some again continuity with with who uh, who was awarded the project because Rankin did the project and they did the extension from Port Robinson back to College Street this past uh, fall winter. So um, you know that's 
we are seeing some some big numbers and big savings with uh, respect to some of these projects. Sorry about that, Michael. Uh, go ahead. Okay, you're the chair. <laughs> you had your hand up. I'm sorry. I started talking. I saw your hand come up. <laughs> so, Teresa, what is the purpose of the revised budget column then? Oh, okay. So because throughout the year, we do have those dollars moving around. So for example, last like this right now, we don't have any, but if there is money being moved around, we do show it in that column there. And then we have a note on the side. So if you look at last year's capital report, we did have a couple of projects that we did move the money around. And that's why we show the revised budget. So right now they're matching because we haven't moved any, any money around, but we could in the fall if we have slippage and, uh, and the director of public works needs money for something else. So really you're right. We, could, we should have hidden this column for this report because there isn't a change. So that, that's a good point. Well, or, or use it like Bill is suggesting if, if the budget, you know, if you go out to tender and you're, it comes in under budget, then you could, you could make the change there and revise, you know, okay. put it in the revised budget column. I don't know. I'm just, yeah. to me, it's a revised budget. That's, it would make yeah. sense that that's where you would put it. Okay. And you're probably, I mean, you're going to end up doing that anyway. If you, if you yeah. move the money around, it's probably because the tender came in under budget. So then you've got some funds and yeah. anyway. Okay. You, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the recommendation. You know your, you know your statements and, and what you want to do. I just yeah no, but this is this is this is um, these are your documents as well as to help you understand what's happening. So if that makes it helpful for you, then we can look at that for sure. Well, I think to to Bill's point, you would want to identify where you've uh, yeah where the, the savings where RFPs have come in under budget. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, any other questions or comments with respect to the capital report? Seeing none, um, I'd like to have a motion that the committee receive the 2021 uh, second quarter capital report for information. Could I have a mover please? Second, Ron, right, thank you. Or second. And Bill second, thank you. And all in favor? So carried, thank you. Uh, moving along, so uh, reserve comments. Thank you. So Charlotte's going to talk about the reserves. Yes. <laughs> thank you through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the committee did request earlier this year that we prepare a report where we present the year end reserve balances alongside of the targets that had been established under the reserve and reserve fund policy. And so what we did is prepare a report and I am going to just speak to some of the points that are in the report before we talk about the numbers. So. I think in reviewing that request, it just became clear that there are a number of items to take into consideration and it's challenging to compare the reserves to the targets at a point in time in isolation from the rest of the information. So I wanted to make sure that we presented everything that the committee may want to know in terms of comparing the balances to the commitments. So the first uh, consideration that we brought to your attention is that the year end reserve balances exclude commitments. If we present in the year end reserve report, the targets compared to the balances, the balances can seem higher than they actually are because we fund the projects that have already occurred out of the reserves. And so the commitments for completing those projects that are still in progress are not taken out of that balance. So that's one consideration uh, to take into account. And for that reason, we're highlighting the fact that if we look at the reserve balances at the end of 2020, they have a balance of approximately 10.1 million. But if we use the balance projected to the end of 2021, including commitments, 
the balance is 6.7 million. When we finish 2021, if there are projects in progress, we're always going to have that timing difference. So the balance could be higher and likely will be higher than 6.7 million at the end of 2021, but we don't know what that number is at this time because we don't know how much will still be in progress at the end of the year. The second consideration is that the reserve and reserve fund balances fluctuate from year to year. So on top of wanting to bring to your attention that there are commitments against the reserves, it's also important to consider um, the example that we give here is the fire reserve. So right now, if you look at the appendix, you'll see a target minimum balance for the fire reserve of 541,000 and an actual projected balance at the end of 2021 of approximately 800,000. So if we looked at that information just alone, it would appear that the fire reserve is very healthy and has already surpassed its target minimum balance. However, when you look at the 10-year forecast that's in the capital budget book, there is a fire expense expenditure right now in the forecast for 2022 of 1.27 million. So then you can see when you look at the amount that we right now are transferring into the fire reserve, that added to the 800,000 is still not enough to pay for the $1.27 million project that we have forecast for 2022. Now that fluctuation is planned and it's necessary because the nature of what we're trying to do with the reserves is that we're gonna save up for something and then we're gonna spend on it and it will drop and then we'll save up again. So that, that fluctuation is um, not problematic in itself, but it just means that uh, I would caution you about looking at the balance at a point in time and forming an opinion about how well we're progressing towards those minimal minimum targets or, or how much we've achieved our goals. Uh, the third point is that the 2021 capital forecast anticipated nearly $15 million of debt from 2023 to 2025, commencing with the 2022 budget. So the other thing that um, I wanted to draw your attention to is that in our last forecast, I think you might recall even the debt forecast we showed we would be going against our policy over the next few years. So when we're looking at our reserves and what is the balance and how much should we fund out of those reserve balances in the coming year, it's worth giving consideration to the fact that the way the forecast was in the 2021 budget showed that we were gonna have to take out $5.8 million of debt as part of the 2022 budget. And then um, we assumed it would be issued the following year. So normally you do the project, you finish the project, and then you debenture after the project is complete. So I don't know with certainty when those projects would be completed. We made the assumption that it's 2023. Uh, number four is that the forecast in the 2021 budget for 2022 onward is subject to change. So it's important for us to know that even though we have that forecast and it said it would be $5.8 million of debt, if we're able to reprioritize the projects, if the directors are able to determine that there's an alternative timing to those projects that's still acceptable, that may change. So even the information I'm giving you right now may be different than what will be presented to you when we bring you the 2022 budget in the fall. And so what one of the things I was highlighting there is that one of the challenges in, in long-term planning is, is those changes. Um, and for that reason, the province brought in OREG 58817 for asset management planning. And that's why the town is really working on its asset management plan. I know the treasurer can uh, answer any questions that you have about that, but that asset management plan and having a more accurate forecast is really key for us to be able to plan financially. Um, so we need to know what has to be spent and what the timing is approximately to spend it because it's very hard to plan for debt and reserves and you know try to build them up 
uh, if, if the forecast expenditures are changing from one year to the next. Um, and then at the same time, there are other impacts that are outside of our control. So we don't know, we often don't know what grants will be available. And even if we know the grants that will, will be available, we don't know if we'll receive them. We don't know when we'll receive them. So grants are a big unknown and the timing of development is also an unknown. So a piece of good news is that um, we looked at our development charges reserve when we were looking at the 2021 budget. And we did finish the year in a better position than we originally forecast because the latter half of 2021, things really started to pick up and it's been doing well so far for the first portion of this year. So, but those are things that are outside of our control. And the fifth point that I wanted to highlight is just that building up the reserves, reducing debt and minimizing the tax levy impact can be competing goals. So, and this is, you know, the challenge for council to evaluate and balance and, you know, try to determine, you know, how do we minimize the impact on the taxpayer, build up the reserves, but then at the same time, we you know we have goals to reduce the debt level. So that's not an easy challenge to face. And um, sometimes, you know, they, we might not be able to do all of those things at the same time. Um, and so those were the um, features and the key uh, items that I wanted to bring to your attention. And then the appendices in the back of that report uh, presented to you the, the balance in the reserves. It presented you, you the forecast balance at the end of 2021. That assumes that the expenditures in, in 2021 are are completed in that year, the target minimum balance and the target balance. And over to the right, um, I also highlighted for you the operating reserve transfers that are required to fund our capital forecast. So if you look at that table on the right hand side, it shows that in 2021, we had, I'm just going to focus on the top section because it's the tax levy impact, but we had about $3.8 million in capital reserve transfers. In 2022, we need about $4.7 million. So that shows you that if we carry out the forecast that we said we were going to do, we're going to need to increase our reserve transfers by almost a million dollars. And that you know, is an estimated five, six percent of the tax levy. And then it's still quite high for 2023 and 2024, and then it starts to drop. So there is the potential that if some projects and their timing can be shifted, we can um, balance that impact out a little bit. But I did want to just highlight that for you because I think the area of interest for the committee is where are we versus the targets and so even just to keep funding what we have in the forecast we still need quite a significant increase in our operating transfers in order to even just keep the balances about where you know close to where they are right now and just heading towards those minimum target balance in the, in the next 20 years. Um, and then the last, the second appendix was for your information, just to show you that these are the projects that are forecasted for, for 2022 to be debentured. The timing could change. I don't have an update right now from the directors whether they are recommending these ones for 2022, but I did wanna provide that for your information. And then we did add an adjustment column. Uh, where we're just showing that we received uh, an announcement of gas tax top up of 521,000, which is great news. So we assume that will be applied towards a roads project and uh, reduce the amount of debt that we need to take out. And also that we have improved our DC collections. So I assumed about an extra 500,000 could come out of the DC reserve instead of debenturing those DC projects. So I hope that was uh, the right level of overview for you of the report. And uh, I hope that is useful information. 
So any questions from committee? Yes, Wayne. Yes, uh, yes thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was just wondering uh, how often uh, those the, the estimates for fire equipment get updated. Does the chief look at this uh, annually or or because I recall it, I thought it was a ladder truck that we had to buy, I thought in the next year or so. Yes, so um, I'll let the treasurer jump in at any point, but the whole capital forecast is evaluated each year. And that's part of, you know, yeah. I'm trying to give you the information, but at the same time, explain that it's subject to change. So um, I, I know that the directors are, the 2022 budgets are in progress right now. And so they will take a look and we do tend to look at, you know, what can we do from the reserves? What is available? Um, and so honestly, this is just trying to present you, you know, a highlight of what was in the 2021 budget that we kind of saw at potentially coming down the road in 2022, but it is subject to change. Yeah. Um, and so I don't, you know, I don't want you to assume that means that we're bringing forward the 2022 budget with, with $5.8 million of debt. It really depends on, you know, if we're able to shift anything, find savings, like, you know, we'll, we'll always look for everything that we possibly can, but yeah, he does look at it regularly. And the other thing too is, you know, these projects that we have listed here, that's what, um, those were like the priority projects listed in the 2021 budget. And so don't forget that, you know, council has to go through each and every project and approve them. So even though we might have it on this list, council might say, no, uh, that's not, we, we don't agree with that. We think that this project's more important and we don't want to take the debt out. So we're not going to do you know, project B, for instance. So this is just, um, the good news about this is that, you know, with the additional top up of the gas tax, as uh, Charlotte mentioned, and how well the, the, the DC revenue is coming in right now, is that we can reduce that at least by a million dollars. Do I want the debt to be taken out? No. I mean, our hmm. goal is always not to take on any debt in the next few years to keep that debt number down. That's our goal. So there's only two ways to do that. There's, you know, you have to, you know, either increase the tax levy to increase the reserves, you know, see if you can defer some of the projects, but they'll, they'll catch up with you. And then the other thing that we're doing constantly is applying for grants. So you'll see a report that's going to council on the 23rd of August with the new ICIP Green Stream Grant Phase 2, and that will take care of two water projects. It's specific to water mains. And so that will take about over a million dollars off of the capital plan because we're trying to get grant money for that. But um, so that's that's the struggle we have. But you know, it is a good period right now that a lot of grant opportunities are out there that I've you know we've never seen that before in such a short period of time. Any further? Thank you for that. Any further questions from uh, committee? Yes, Ron. Yes, you, Mr. Chair. Do you think the grant money's out there because of the elections uh, in the next year, year and a half? <laughs> Probably. <Just a> thought. <laughs> so it, it's very important that we try to capitalize on that yep. because in two years it's going to dry up. Yep. Well, less than that. Yep. Teresa oh, is very focused on the grants, I, yeah. I can assure you. Yeah, well, what we always focus on is, you know, try to take something off that capital list. If it's on the capital list, let's try to get one of those projects that we know we have to do and, you know, meets the eligibility and let's go for it. So that's what we've been doing. So Charlotte, I have a question for you. When uh, you talked about the reserve transfers and, uh, estimated tax levy impact. I assume that that tax levy impact um, excluded uh, tax growth just through yes. uh, building that uh, through, yes. through new development. So yes, it excludes that, growth. It excludes everything else, you know, that may, so there could be other things in the budget that would 
increase the tax levy, but there could be other savings that will decrease it. So this is just in isolation. This item alone, how would it impact the tax levy if we had to increase the, the reserve transfers at that rate each year over the next five years? Yeah, so it's not, and that's where, you know, it's challenging because I want to provide you the information, but the budget document sort of ties at least only, but only on one year at a time, but it ties that whole thing together so you can understand how, how are the reserves playing off against debt? What is the tax increase? You know, what's the effect of the capital on the operating, the water and wastewater rates? So um, it does all really tie in together. But yes, this is not, this does not mean this is what's you know, what the impact is going to be on 2022. It just means I wanted, you know, as part of telling you where we are relative to the targets to also bring to your attention that in order to keep increasing those balances, we're already having a pretty significant forecast in the increase just to fund our capital. Hey, thank you for those comments. Uh, Bill, I'm sorry, I've, I see your hand up. So if you want to uh, ask a question, fire away. Yeah, no worries, John. I know it's hard. I apologize for the arrangement. It's all this last minute changes uh, since since the world is starting to reopen that uh, I didn't have before. So I apologize for the, the uh, kind of just being on audio tonight. Um, yeah. Anyways, the question, so Charlotte, yeah, we all know that uh, regardless long-term or short-term planning, the, the minute you set the plan, it changes probably an hour after uh, it's set. So we can all appreciate that. Question I have is, so, you know, it's, it seems like you've highlighted forecasting to be, uh, you know, a pretty significant challenge. And, and unfortunately, that's where a lot of your planning is stems from. When's that capital or asset management planning expected to be completed? I think you gave a date at a previous meeting and I, I can't recall yeah. off the top of my head. Uh, so I can answer that, Bill. So the, um, the inventory of the core assets is completed. Right now, it is being uh, uploaded into our... Um, the, the, we have a third party that has the asset management system, so they are uploading the information there. We're looking to come to council in September with a presentation of the, uh, the asset management plan. Okay. No. So, and that's, that's great, Teresa, because I think that that's yeah. like a, a major struggle of what I think we're trying to accomplish here uh, around debt requirements, either in the near or, or future affordability, raising tax rates. And, and we can all, all appreciate those competing uh, demands there. But uh, I guess once we see that, I think what I would like to see from management is, is what would management recommend to achieve some of those, knowing there's gonna be variables and, and a, a target's a target, it's meant to be kind of fluctuated. So I don't expect us to kind of get there and hold the line. It'll be higher in some years and lower in others. Uh, but obviously I would think a goal of the town should be not let any specific reserves funds go into negative if possible uh, and, and kind of get out of that that old cycle, which is where I think the town has significantly come a long way in uh, from, from my previous comments. So. Um, I think that's probably more my comment is it's great to highlight challenges and, 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 you know, competing demands and variables changing and things of that. And it's, it's how management plans on, on navigating that I think is, uh, is probably what I'd like to see um, at a future meeting if possible. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Uh, some municipalities, including the region, they actually have a dedicated tax levy to capital. Um, so if you look at the appendix one, where we see the, um, the amounts, you know, the 5.7% increase, 6.5, and then, it, then, then, it, then the decrease, if you take this, the $1.7 million that's needed over the next five years, divided by five, it's approximately 350,000. So it's approximately 2% of a tax levy increase every year to sort of replenish, you know, so some years you'll be sure, but then you'll, you'll catch up. So, you know, is that, is that something that, you know, could be a recommendation to council to have a specific tax levy dedicated only to capital, you know, of 2% and then there's an operating levy. So then you always know that there's money going towards the, uh, the reserve. Um, you know, we did that with the water 
the water uh, and wastewater rates, you know, we had the study that was done and it showed, you know, we had four years of no increases. And then even after the, the four years, the five years of increases, we're still the lowest in the region. And we had an average of 8.5% 8, 8 increase, you know, in all those years. And we're slowly catching up to everyone else. But it wasn't a huge dollar impact to the public. So I think that's what it is. I think if you look at, you know, what is a 2% increase to the average household is X. And it's dedicated, you know, just strictly to capital every year. You know, is that something that the council would be open to? Because it, it, it make it a little bit easier even for planning. Because what we don't want is if we're trying to balance the budget, we don't want the transfers to reserves as the first place that people cut. I mean, we've been fortunate the last two years that we've actually had surpluses that, you know, we put the surpluses in the reserves and then we didn't have to actually have that large increase to the reserves through the operating budget for the tax levy increase. But you can't, we can't do that every year. We won't see those surpluses this year with what's happening with COVID. So we sort of, you know, had a bit of a break, but I think, you know, I would like to see, I think it would be good to have a certain percentage dedicated towards capital. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, so from my perspective, I think bringing forward uh, options, recommendations as, as like, like you just threw on the table right there is probably a great start. Uh, I agree. Cause in the end, you, if without the reserves, you're always going to lean on debt. Uh, or you're not going to get anything done, which neither of those options are feasible, right? For the right. long-term sustainability of the town. So it is really coming up with a holistic solution that kind of tries to balance those competing demands, knowing that there's going to be variability and fluctuation through it. And I, I think your forecast, knowing uh, based on your update there as to how close you are uh, bringing it in September to council, I think you know, that's, that's a good starting point to start doing some more of that solidified long-term planning and then work, work in what solutions should be implemented from a town's perspective to kind of ensure we can see those plans through and those renewals through. Okay, yeah, thank you. So Wayne, is that your hand up? Yes, it is. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, um, before I could I could think about anything like that, I think it's I don't think it's a great it's it's a bad idea. I, I almost made a mistake there in saying it wasn't a great idea, but I think it's I think it's probably a good idea. But I would have to see the asset management plan and uh, what the forecast is for expenditures and things on each of the major assets before I can make that leap in my mind to to have a, a levy as uh, dedicated to capital assets i think it, in concept it's great i need to know the um, bit of the amounts and you know a little bit more about that and how we're going to manage our assets because uh, i think this is going to be a big step forward having an asset management plan in front of us so i'm going to throw something else on the table MPAC is doing uh their reviews and will be coming out with new tax levies uh will that have a major impact on the tax levies to our residents and as a result provide lots of money to the kitty oh are you talking about the assessment values yep so when MPAC reassesses properties, it doesn't necessarily bring in more money to the town because we normally adjust the tax rate. Like basically you take the amount of tax revenue you need to, um, uh, what's the right word I'm looking for? Raise for that year, you divide it by the weighted uh, assessment values and that gives you the tax rate. So a change in the tax, like in the assessment values in themselves don't necessarily lead to a change in the tax rate. It's when we shift the tax rates, which is based on essentially what we decide as part of the budget. So where someone's taxes would shift because of the reassessment by impact would be more if their property value is changing at a different rate than everyone else's property values on average, then that would lead to them having, you know, a higher balance owing on their taxes. Does that help? 
Yes, thank you. Yeah, and in, in the same respect, you can have someone whose tax, you know, it's going down, right? So you have an yeah. offset, yeah. Exactly, yeah, it's more, that's what I'm always trying to explain is it's more how your value is moving in relation to others that will affect how a, a value reassessment impacts your property taxes. Whereas like if everybody's assessment value went up at exactly the same rate, then it's sort of like we've got that amount of property tax we need to raise. It's divided by the assessment values. Each person's piece of that pie, so to speak, wouldn't really change if everyone's is changing at the same rate. It's just when you know someone's goes up or down at a different rate than, than others. Okay, so any other uh, questions or comments with respect to reserves? I, yeah, I, Michael. I just wanna say, uh, you know, with all the moving parts and variables, but you still, there's a lot of information there in the report. And I think it's, it's very valuable, you, you know, with all the caveats and everything that's still, you know, there's, there's still a lot of great information and, having a better asset plan will make it better, but uh, it's, it's a great starting point. So you know, kudos, good work. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate your feedback uh, in terms of, you know, just what, what should, you know, what should be going to council or the committee, you know, what part of it is useful because this was sort of a new uh, report and it was just, you know, it took us time to try to think through how to make sure we're showing you the full picture. Um, so certainly appreciate your input on that. So any further comments? Seeing none. Um, we would like a motion that the committee receive the status of reserves and reserve fund balance report for information. Could I have a mover, please? Ron, thank you. Second, Wayne, thank you. All in favor? So carried, thank you. Uh, this brings us to uh, 13 financial risks, so COVID-19 update. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, the, as I mentioned earlier with the, um, the MCC opening up in July, that really has changed a lot of things around. Right now at Town Hall, we're still closed to the public, but we're looking at a reopening, I think, right after uh, Labor Day. Um, the, uh, the CEO always provides council with an update on what's happening, but that's what we're working towards, um, just looking at how the numbers are. Um, exciting news at this Thursday, uh, as you all know, that the band shell is, uh, is going to have its first concert. Uh, if you look behind us here at Peace Park, the fence has gone up and, you know, they're going to be, you know, monitoring the, uh, the number of people that are, are going to the concert, but it's very exciting to see that. It feels like, you know, the, you could feel the excitement at the town. That, uh, that people are feeling like things are starting to go you know, a bit back to normal, especially with the band shell. Uh, we did get an announcement today. Uh, we received two new grants and I know Vicky's gonna get something out. Uh, we applied um, for two grants under the festival and events uh, grants, one for the Christmas in Pelham. And that grant was about 15,500. And the second one was the chill on the hill. That's the Thursday night event that we're having here with um, the, uh, the, the various uh, food vendors here, and that was about a $26,000 grant. So we, we just received that announcement a couple hours ago. So we're very excited. And so, so things are, 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 are just feel like they're going much better and we're moving towards the, you know, the, the right direction. And you know, as I mentioned that the vaccination centers, uh, the, the clinic has now moved upstairs and to have both gyms back has had a positive impact on the um, the camps, the children's camps, that they can now use the gyms to uh, to do some of their programming and basketball and pickleball. So all those things are now, you know, uh, back um, uh, operational. So Teresa, is the walking track open now too? 
I'm not sure about that okay. because uh, I know that you have to register for that. There was, so yeah, so I'm not sure about that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I think I think it's going to be in a few weeks. There, there was there were there was something with the walking track that that Vicky was working on. What excluding residents from other communities? <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, you had your hand up. Yes, Mr. Chair. I was. I was. Uh, and this may not be a proper question, but is I had somebody ask me about wheelchair tennis the other day, and they're they're not able to play wheelchair wheelchair tennis. Is that a is that outside or inside? I don't even know that when asking this question. Uh, yeah, that's actually outside. And when we, we have a grant uh, application right now for the, resurface, the resurfacing of the tennis okay. courts at Centennial Park. And then one of the areas that we highlighted was the accessibility for uh, wheelchairs. And we showed them the pictures of the big giant cracks that we have in there. Yep. So um, Vicky did say that if somebody does want to play uh, wheelchair tennis, they could do something in the gym. So I'm, okay. I'm not sure what, um, but she said that they, they, they could accommodate something in the gym. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll wait for, I'll wait for Vicki to, to announce something like that. I won't say anything about it. So, <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. So any further questions around COVID? Just hope that we don't go into uh, stage four and further lockdowns and hopefully wait for, look forward to better things to come. So thanks for uh, that report, Teresa. Um, so we have no unfinished business at this point. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, November 24th, 2021 at 4 p.m. Um, so could, um, Make a motion for adjournment that this regular meeting of the Pelham Finance and Audit Committee be adjourned. Could I have a uh, uh, for mover? So Michael, thank you. Seconder? I can second. <laughs> Bill, thank you. All right, so uh, all in favor? So carried. So thank you everyone for uh, your input and enjoy the rest of the summer. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.